Well, from crypto to pot, it's logical, right? Marijuana madness is taking the nation by storm, but our next guest isn't buying into this hype. He's calling one company a cautionary tale for the cannabis space in a new article titled Cannabis Retailer MedMen's Financial troubles are a warning for the marijuana industry. Alex Berenson, former New York Times reporter and author of Tell Your Children the Truth About Marijuana, Mental Illness and Violence. Alex makes the case against the company in this. You can find this article on CNBC.com, by the way. Alex, welcome to the show. Most of the um, for having me. MedMen is, is, is small compared to a lot of the other publicly traded companies that we talk about here on CNBC, but it's very high profile. It's got storefronts on swanky avenues here in New York City, it's, et cetera. Um, you say they're losing money at a, at a super fast clip. Isn't that the price of doing business in a fast growing industry? Well, I mean, I thought this was a plant that you could sell for 40 or 50 or $100 an ounce, uh, you know, plant product, that the margins on it should be very high. Uh, MedMen is important both because it is the highest profile cannabis retailer in the U.S. and because it's had this aggressive and explicit strategy to try to market to, uh, to new users, to people who haven't used. And so, uh, you know, I, I wrote a book about the problems with marijuana, the health problems, which is, which is in some ways separate from this. So I, obviously I don't particularly believe in legalization and I'm explicit about that and people should know that. But I think the issues around whether or not companies are gonna be able to make money in the space is, is a very interesting and important one and obviously one that your viewers are gonna be interested in. One point that you do make in the article, and I know that there are going to be a lot of people who who don't want to read what you have to say and, and they don't believe what you're saying because they think they just have an ax to grind. But there is one important point in the article at least, and that is that one of the biggest sources of competition is the black market. Yes. And I bring that up because just this morning, Acreage CEO uh, on Squawk Box had said that he thinks the biggest competition is actually the black market. I mean, legal companies like a MedMen or anybody else in the space, Acreage for instance, they are competing against a black market which in which you don't have to pay ta users don't pay taxes. There's no cost no to licensing, no, no licensing. It's all the right. regulatory over overhead that other companies have to pay for. Yes. Um, and so, so when you legalize, you really have two choices. You can do it the sort of the Colorado and Oregon way, which is a lot of entry, prices go down, it's pretty easy to open dispensaries. Now, MedMen actually has avoided those markets. They've wanted to be in higher regulatory, higher cost markets. But the problem with that seems to be that the black market remains unregulated. And so you have this perverse uh, uh, situation happening in California where some of the legal dispensary owners and the regulators are saying, we need more law enforcement against the people who are selling this, which... Uh, you know, against the people who are selling it in the black market, um, which, by the way, is not going to endear MedMen or other companies that are in the legal space to the heaviest users of this product. So there's, all, there, there's just all kinds of very interesting dynamics that go on when you legalize a substance that's been illegal for so long. And I think investors haven't paid any attention to that. And I think they also haven't paid any attention to the psychosis risk, which is, uh, in other words, and let's put aside the medical issue, that's a real legal issue. Um, and I've said this on CNBC before, I think there's a real potential for, you know, industry, I don't want to say destroying, but industry damaging lawsuits if people become psychotic and you can connect it to a specific, uh, you know, store's product. So, so Alex, um, leaving aside the psychosis issue, I, I think when we're talking about this industry, we're talking about a growth sector of any kind where capital is also very much constrained. Yes. Um, so the things that you're talking about, I, I think, are not big surprises to people. But I think you're, you're highlighting MedMen, and I think there's a lot of people that have been critical of this company yes. particularly, not just the concept of people. But I, I'll leave them alone. Um, are you concerned about demand overall? In other words, it sounds to me like, because everything that, that you're saying, I think, is fundamental to companies that are in a growth sector, which, by the way, is constrained. They can't raise debt. Um, but do I hear you saying, I don't even think that there's really the kind of demand outside of that? I mean, I think that's a really, really good question, too. If you look at the number of new users per year, and there's, you know, there's federal surveys on this, it hasn't actually risen as much as you might expect. What's happened is that demand has become more concentrated. And, you know, just talking to people who use, and obviously a lot of users have reached out to me since the book came out, there's a lot of people who use this drug once or a handful of times and don't like the experience they have. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there are some people who really love it and who get very into it, but there are people out there, it's not like alcohol. People, there's casual users who don't appreciate it. Let me ask you, do you extrapolate anything from what happened in New Jersey a uh, week or two ago? So I think that's another really good point. The, the companies and I think investors have been counting on recreational legalization to spread very quickly. Um, 
in part because of what's happened in California where there's this issue with how much tax revenue has been raised, which has been way low. It's been about a third, uh, I think, of the projection last year. That's right. I mean, so, and when you count the cost of regulation, you're talking about a relatively small net benefit to the states for legalizing, at least so far. I think politicians in places like New Jersey and New York, where this, you know, for better or worse, a lot of people view this as a cash grab, they're saying to themselves, are we really going to raise that much money? And in, in New York, if we're going to raise $250 million, but we've promised $2 billion to various interest groups, is this, you know, does this actually help the budget at all? Alex, thanks so much for coming by and sharing Thank your you. your point of view on this. We get a lot of cannabis bulls on, so it's important to get the other yeah. side of the story. Um, and of course, you can catch uh, Alex's full article on MedMen specifically. But you know, it's a statement about the broader industry, according to uh, his analysis, on CNBC.com. Now, we should note that we did reach out for MedMen for an official statement, and here's what they told CNBC: MedMen is building an industry that will continue to unlock significant investment opportunities as legalization advances. We have consistently executed on our strategy of increasing market market share in the most important cannabis markets within the U.S. and remain focused on achieving long-term profitability. Alex, again, thank you. Alex right. Berenson. Uh, Tim. Well, a couple things to say here. First of all, I mean, Alex is bringing up also, if you want to get a little technical on this, Section 280E of the IRS code basically makes it impossible for these guys to make money. All right. So the big thing that people are hoping for is you get a banking deal, you get a safe act, you get the ability to actually not have punitive pricing because it's effectively what it is. So uh, the illicit market is alive and well. And frankly, I'd say that the industry really wants regulation. The, of course, the industry does. In fact, the industry is, of course, wants to put the illicit market out of right. business. Alex talked quickly about the pricing um, of, of cannabis as a crop. I think that's irrelevant. This is all about building brands. MedMen has built a brand. Now, I don't think that they're, they've got an enormous cash burn, and I think it's important people look at corporate governance, look how people are running their companies. That, that is one of his key points, and I, I couldn't agree more with that. So it sounds like a key point of the book is also the adverse um, health effects. I know that obviously one of the things, the medicinal aspect of it is really important, but you know, the psychosis thing, you know, who knows? I haven't read the data. There's also a lot of other social things. You know, you talk about that black market, you talk about, you know, the impact of incarceration around the country. I mean, there's so many other levels here that I think there's a lot of states who really want to fix some serious societal problems, and I think they can do that, you know, through legalization. So this is a train the genie's out of the bottle here it's happening and i know i don't need to convince you of that but i think there's a lot of other benefits that not just tax revenues that can come from this